from Leibniz monadology. There is also no way of explaining how a monad can be altered or changed internally by some other creature, since one cannot transpose anything in it, nor can one conceive of any internal motion that can be excited, directed, augmented, or diminished within it, as can be done in composites, where there can be change among the parts. The monads have no windows through which something can enter or leave. Now, a monad, again, is a mental substance, and it is a simple substance. It is a substance which perceives and which is atomic in the classic etymological sense. It is a mental substance, a substance which perceives and which has no parts. This Leibniz thinks guarantees that the monads are windowless. The idea that the monads are windowless is a classic famous idea in Leibnizian metaphysics, and we have to do our best to understand what it means. What it means is roughly this. The monads don't have any windows by which they can look out on other things, or by which they can be influenced by other things, or influence other things in turn. A monad has no means by which it can look out on some other substance, or by which it can be influenced by some other substance, or by which some other substance can influence it. Why does it have no means by which it can uh, thus perceive or influence or be perceived or be influenced? Well, it's because a monad has no parts. Because it has no parts, there can be no internal motion. Now, now contrast that uh, with my brain. My brain occupies space. My brain has parts. All the different pieces of my brain are the different parts of my brain. There can be motion internal to the brain. A monad has no parts, so there can be no internal motion. There's no two or more different parts of the monad that can shift around uh, in relation to each other. The monad has no parts, there can be no internal motion. Now with my brain that has internal parts and internal motion, the possibility of internal motion, you can have some influence from the outside. I could, um, uh, you, you, you could hit me in the head with something and if you hit me hard enough you could rearrange the parts of my brain. Or um, the more more safe approach, um, shine a light in my eyes, and the external influence of the light has some effect on what's going on inside my brain, because it causes the parts of my brain to, to shift, to change in one way, to be in motion, to be adjusted in relation to each other in relation to the brain as a whole. Things in my brain move. An electrical current will move through my brain or one part of the brain will be adjusted. In this way, things from outside the brain can have an effect on what is in the brain. But the monad, the monad is not like that. It's a simple substance. It has no parts. So Leibniz says, since it has no parts, we cannot conceive of any internal motion that can be excited, directed, augmented, or diminished within it by any other creature influencing it from the outside, or indeed any internal motion that can influence it from inside. There can be no uh, internal motion where there are no parts. This is a monad's idea. Uh, this is Leibniz's idea of the monads. They are mental substances. They are simple, and they are without windows, because there's no internal parts to be rearranged uh, under the influence of some external force. All change in a monad is derived from what is internal to the monad. All change in the perception of a monad is not from some window by which it can perceive the world outside the monad. All change derives from what is within. Now let's uh, move a little bit down uh, in the text. I also take for granted that every created being, and consequently the created monad as well, is subject to change, and even that this change is continual in each thing. The monads do not receive influences from outside. They are windowless, but they do change. It follows from what, have, we, from what we have just said that the monad's natural change comes from an internal principle, since no external cause can influence it internally. They do change, their perceptions do change, but their change in perception is not influenced by something from outside the monad. The change comes from within. The passing state which involves and represents a multitude in the unity, or in the simple substance, 
is nothing other than what one calls perception. The monads have perception. The perceptions are the qualities of the monads, and they do change. Our perceptions change. Uh, this perception, Leibniz continues, is something which should be distinguished from apperception or consciousness, as will be evident in what follows. Now, um, this may be a new word for you. <laughs> perception. Well, I don't think that needs to be defined, but apperception. What on earth is apperception? Well, it's consciousness, or it is uh, perception of perception, so to speak. Apperception is not just being aware of something, as, uh, for example, um, uh, even an animal is. A, a snake presumably is aware of the world around it. It has some level of perception. But it is not aware of itself as a perceiving thing. Apperception, or consciousness, is being aware of yourself as a perceiving thing. It is perception of perception, uh, loosely speaking. So uh, the monads have perception, and some monads have apperception. Uh, that's what we are. We are uh, higher monads, which are capable of apperception as well as perception. These perceptions are the um, uh, qualities, the properties of the monads. Mo the property of the monad is what it perceives. And the perception of a monad does change. Monads do change. Their internal characteristics change. But this change is derived purely from the internal, not from the external, because since they have no parts, there is apparently no way to conceive, no way to explain how a monad can be altered or changed internally by some other creature. They are windowless. Change comes from within.